Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples. Let's finish up our lecture talking about levels of measurement. Now this particular slide may be something that you've covered before in previous classes, and that's great. If not, that's okay. Do spend some time on this one. We'll also come back and revisit it a little later in the semester, and you'll get a chance to maybe work it into your assignments as well. Now, when we talk about measuring variables, uh, when we're operationalizing them, we can do that in a lot of different senses. And I kind of want to give you some different ways of doing that so you can think about that for the future. Now, generally, we think of four ways. We think of nominal data, ordinal data, interval, and ratio data. Um, just to give you a heads up, because of the way that I teach statistical analysis, we're actually going to treat interval and ratio data as one category. Okay, that may be a bit surprising for some of you. The good news is, is those are the two categories that are the hardest to tell apart, so it'll make things easier for everyone, but it works out just fine. Nominal and ordinal data are first. Now, nominal simply means that we're dealing with um, a named category and that there's no order to those categories. So let's pretend that we have a variable called political affiliation. Um, we can make a long list of a political affiliations, uh, Republican, Democratic, Independent, Green Party, Libertarian, blah, 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 blah. These are all categories. They're all names. Do you see how they're all names? And here's another thing too, is that I can't really rank them. I can't say that somehow um, libertarian is a three and Republican is a four and independent is a five. I can't really do that. Maybe you could try to argue that there's like a continuum line. So like, you know, maybe Republican goes one direction and Democratic goes another and libertarian goes to one particular end and so forth. But generally speaking, these are just all names. Let's give another example. Let's pretend that I have the names of the people in my class. So I have a certain number of students in my class and on Blackboard, I can get a little Excel guide that'll have all the names of all my students. And those are just names. They're not in any particular order. I can't say that one student is ranked over another student. I could alphabetize them, but that's a little different. That's not really ranking them. That's just putting them in that particular order. These are nominal variables. Um, they're just phrases. They have no ranking. Now, ordinal is a little different because these are categories that suddenly have some kind of ranking. Um, let's pretend that you have um, a race is a really good example. So you run a um, 100 meter dash. Um, 100, is there even such a thing as a 100 meter dash? Anyways, you run a, a, a short race. You run, run one lap around the track. And in Finishing the, the crossing the finish line, you get a, a position of first, second, third, or fourth, fifth, and so forth. So each of those is ranked. First, we know comes first. We know second comes after first, but before third. Uh, third comes before fourth. And we could even say that 15th is last because we had 15 people running the race. They're ranked. Now, the difference between nominal and ordinal is that nominal is just categories that are names, but ordinal suddenly are categories that have names and have some kind of rank. So first place comes before last place. But what's the distance between them? We know that there's one place between first and second, but what was the gap in terms of like the time on the race? So a good example would be like, maybe you have a really fast runner who finishes the race really quickly and then everyone else is really slow. So the one person finishes the first lap in you know one minute and then everybody else it takes three minutes. And then second, third, fourth, and fifth are maybe really close together. Only seconds come apart between second and fifth, you know? That's kind of one of the issues with ordinal data is we don't know the exact distance between them. They're just sort of ranked orders. And since we don't have a sense of distance uh, or time between them, we think about them as just being ordered categories. We don't give it any more thought than that. With interval and ratio data, we now move from these categories that are rankable or not and now we're moving into meaningful numbers that have actual distances between them. Age is a really great example of interval ratio data. I can tell you exactly how many days are between turning age 13 and turning age 14. It's 365 days between them, right? Likewise, I know exactly how much time it takes you to go from age 14 to age 15. We know how many days, hours, minutes, seconds, and so forth. We know exactly the distance between those. 
Now, the cool thing is, is when you were in 232, you probably learned about interval and ratio as two different categories. The actual difference between them, they're similar for statistical purposes and they can be treated the same, but in the actual differences between them is that ratio data actually has a meaningful zero. Um, but for our purposes, we're simply going to lump them together. In fact, you're gonna see how far we're gonna lump them together in just a moment. When we think about our nominal and ordinal variables, then we're gonna be calling these categorical variables or categorical data. When I say categorical data, I literally mean that these are just categories. They may or may not have ranking. We also call these discrete data because the measure can only take very specific values. The names can only be the names that are available. The political affiliations can only be the political affiliations that are available. You'll never hear me use the phrase discrete data, however, in my lectures. I'm always going to call them categorical variables because I find that is so much easier to remember. These are categories. Likewise, when we deal with interval ratio data, you're going to hear me call this continuous data. Continuous data means that they can take on any number of values, negative or positive, but the numbers are meaningful. Remember, we know that age zero means that you haven't reached your first year of age. When you're 90, we know exactly how many years it is from zero to 90. Um, the seconds it takes you to finish a race, your score on an exam. These are all examples of interval ratio data. Now, when we are dealing with secondary data analysis, you'll often deal with a lot of interval ratio data, things like educational attainment percentages, so the percentage of people who have like a college or a high school degree, um, the percentage of people in poverty, the average household income, these are all interval ratio data. Now, the big thing to remember is that there are certain statistical analyses you can do using interval ratio data and certain statistical analyses that you can do using um, categorical data. And that's where the difference between these two will really pop up in this class. All right. For our lecture, that wraps things up. We've talked a little bit more about how we measure stuff. We've thought a little bit about variables in our previous lecture. We're thinking all about building up to actually creating our hypotheses and learning to test those hypotheses. In fact, we'll get started on that coming up in our upcoming lectures. If you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have anything at all you need help on, just let me know. I'm here to help. Talk soon. See ya.